Just a few announcements. Today is First Friday, so just a reminder, it's a day of abstinence from meat. Uh, you can do some other uh, penance or some other form of self-denial. So it is a day of penance, day of abstinence, even though it is during the Easter season. And also because it's First Friday, um, the ideal is to receive Holy Communion with the intention of making reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. You know, sometimes people forget just before Communion, it doesn't matter if you make the intention earlier that you intend to receive with the desire to make reparation, your intention is uh, acknowledged by God and that is fulfilled. Also, just a reminder, this evening after the 7.30 p.m. Mass, we will have an all-night vigil of adoration. Tomorrow morning, um, I will be attending a, an ordination in Hamilton, so Father Bosco will be here to replace me. And in the evening tomorrow at 4 p.m., we will have the Living Rosary here in the church, uh, organized by the Legion of Mary. So we invite you to participate in that. And later in the evening at 7 p.m., we will be showing the movie online through Zoom, the Bridge of Roses, and you can access the link for that on our parish website uh, just before the movie is to start. So that's tomorrow evening. And the Bridge of Roses, it's about Our Lady of the Cape, the historical background, but also the miracles attributed to Our Lady of the Cape. So it's, it should be very interesting. And this is all uh, for the reason or the purpose of uh, trying to prepare ourselves for the coming of the pilgrim statue of Our Lady of, of the Cape, which will be coming to our parish near the end of the month. Uh, I apologize for the readings. Um, yeah, there's supposed to be special readings because St. Francois de Laval, uh, he was declared a saint fairly recently, so he was just a blessed prior to that, and so there's special readings for him, but. We didn't actually get those those readings, unfortunately, uh, at today's Mass. But uh, the Gospel reading should have been about uh, the Good Shepherd, how the Good Shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And the first reading, I think, was Paul's letter to St. Timothy, where he talks about that in light of the, the second coming of our Lord, that he should preach the word in season and out of season. And so, of course, the Good Shepherd is Christ. He has laid down his life for all of us, his sheep. And we are called to imitate him, and in particular, priests and bishops. And in laying down their lives for the sheep, it's not just in the case of martyrdom, when, when they have to stand firm in regards to the faith, but laying down one's life for one's sheep, it's, it's a daily activity. In other words, daily self denial. So bishops are called to do this. Priests are called to do this. They're not called to live for themselves, to live a very worldly life, but rather to sacrifice themselves for the sake of, of serving God's, God's people, serving God also. And yes, I mean, priests have to recreate also. They probably, you know, need to socialize and, and get exercise and all these other things. So uh, they have to live a very balanced kind of life. And, and, of course, a good priest or a good bishop is one who is very dedicated to serving his flock and sacrificing himself for his flock. And when we look at the life of St. Uh, Francois de Laval, we see this in his life. Great, great commitment. And he had a huge area that he was responsible for um, because when he was made the bishop here in Canada, uh, there were no, no boundaries, there were no uh, dioceses, but it was just wherever there were French speakers, he was their bishop. So he started a seminary and a minor seminary and all kinds, he did all kinds of things to serve the people of his time. So he's a great example to us and he is also the patron saint of all the Canadian bishops. So it's good for us to pray to St. Francois de Laval to inspire our bishops to, to keep us on the straight and narrow, to do what they can to keep us on the straight and narrow. And I think that that message of St. Paul to St. Timothy, you know, preach the word in season and out of season, is very relevant uh, to us in our own age because, you know, there, there's so much bad things happening in society, people just accepting sinful lifestyles and thinking there's nothing wrong with it, including many Catholics. So often priests don't preach on moral issues. So we need to do that. 
And this, this, this idea of, you know, the, the good shepherd laying down his life for his sheep, well, it's not just priests and bishops who are called to do that, even the laity. And if you think about it, you know, a mother or a father, in many ways they have to sacrifice themselves for each other, for their children. And the reality is that we are all our brother's keeper. And so we all need to make sacrifices in order to be at the service of others. And if we consider that admonition of St. Paul to St. Timothy, you know, in light of the second coming of Christ, you know, many people in the early church thought that the second coming of Christ was going to happen very soon. Now, St. Paul understood that, no, it's going to be a bit later. But even then, there was that sense of urgency. We cannot lose time. We, sh we shouldn't lose any opportunity. I mean, think about it. If you have the opportunity to speak to someone about the faith and you don't, will you get that opportunity again? And the answer is, there's no guarantee that you will. So take advantage of those opportunities because the greatest gift that we can give to others is the gift of faith. Now, yes, ultimately it's God who gives that gift to them, but God sent out his disciples. God sends us out because God understands or God wants us to understand the communal nature of us as human beings, that we interact, that we influence each other for good and for bad. And the ideal is that we are influencing each other for the good. And the greatest good is that, that we lead others to Christ. Please join now in reciting the pro-life prayer um, leading up to the March for Life in Ottawa next Thursday. So um, to pray for this cause, for the success of, of the event, but also for those who, who are perhaps in need of, of prayers specifically related to the pro-life issue. Let us recite it together. Holy Mother of God, we praise God in you for his gift to you of your immaculate conception. Mother of the innocents, we beg you to protect all mothers of the unborn and the children within their wombs. We pray to your sorrowful and immaculate heart for all mothers and all unborn children that they may find comfort and peace through your Son, Jesus Christ and have a life here on earth and by the most precious blood shed by your Son, that they may have eternal life with him in heaven. O oh, help of Christians, we plead with you for your help to end the holocaust of abortion. Look down with mercy upon us and melt the hearts of our people so that life may be revered. Open our minds to the great worth of human life and to responsibilities that accompany human freedom. Free us from the falsehoods that lead to the evil of abortion and the breakdown of family life. O oh, merciful Mother, we also pray for all abortionists and supporters of abortion that they may be converted and accept your Son, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior. Give us the courage to reject the culture of death and the strength to build a new culture of life. May Christ the King reign over us, our families, cities, provinces, nations, and the whole of humanity. Our Lady of Guadalupe, protectress of the unborn, pray for us.